The basis of in expectations theory is that if two different investment strategies have identical levels of risk and identical payoffs, then those two different investment strategies have to have the same price today. Otherwise, there's an arbitrage opportunity. So let's suppose that there's a strategy that pays off $100 in one year. So on our timeline, what it would look like is that there are there's a $100 payoff that happens at year one. One way that we could invest to receive $100 would be to invest in a one-year bond that we pay something today and that in one year we receive a hundred dollars now another strategy to get a hundred dollars in one year is to invest in a six-month bond today so we'd be paying something today we invest in that six-month bond and then we're gonna get a payoff here in six months now, if we take that payoff and reinvest it in another six-month bond, we can structure that initial payoff, sorry, that initial purchase such that we will receive $100 in one year. So either strategy, either buying a one-year bond that pays off $100 or buying a certain amount of a six-month bond today, then reinvesting the payoff after six months in another six-month bond such that we get $100 in one year. These two strategies have identical payoffs and, for the moment, let's assume identical levels of risk. Therefore, each strategy will have the same um, the same price today. Therefore, we can figure out what interest rates will be in the future. We have expectations of what interest rates will be in the future. So let's assume let's assume that under strategy one, so this blue strategy, the interest rate quoted on a semiannual basis is R2. So over this six-month period, we would receive R2, and over this six-month period, we would receive R2. Now, let's also assume that under strategy two, we will receive R1 today, some interest rate today, but we don't know what this interest rate will be. We don't know what the six-month interest rate will be in six months from now. So we can actually figure that out under expectations theory. Now remember that these two investment strategies have identical levels of risk and identical payoffs. This means that they'll have identical returns. So let's say that our total return from strategy one is one plus whatever the interest rate on strategy one will be squared because we're receiving R2 oops, for that six month period and R2 for that six month period. And that interest rate or that rate of return has to be equal to investing for six months at R1 and then reinvesting those proceeds for another six months. The rate that we're going to get at for those following six months, so that six month period starting in six months, we don't know it today, but we know that whatever it is, these two rates of return have to be identical. So we're going to call this the forward rate, and we're going to use the notation F to denote the forward rate, one 
one. So what this is saying, this first subscript, is the interest rate starting one period in the future, and we're gonna be using six month periods, so the forward rate is one period in the future, and that interest rate is good for another one period. So based on this relationship, we sitting here today, we know what R2 is. We can see that today. We can go over to the Wall Street Journal and see whatever R2 is today. We can also go over to the Wall Street Journal and find out what R1 is today. We can see that today. We don't know what uh, the forward rate is for six months in the future for a six-month bond. But because this equality has to hold, we can do a little bit of algebra and figure that out. This is the basis of expectations theory. The idea that if two strategies have identical levels of risk and identical payoffs, then the rates of return of the two strategies have to be the same. We don't know what the forward rate one month or sorry, one period in the future will be, but under expectations theory, this relationship has to hold.